and I'm back, dreamers. <laughs> oh, and I apologize for being gone yesterday, but welcome back once again to the Mystic Escape. I am your host, Dion Mystique, amateur writer, and today we're going to begin it off with some real talk slash condolences. Um, the singer Miss Celine Dion has lost both her husband and her brother to cancer in a very short period of time apart from each other. Honey, big hugs and big loves goes out to you in your time of loss. There's so many people that have lost, lost people are people we have lost to cancer and and related causes like that. Honey, I know I know people have, who have reported suicide and, and, and you know, just a, a lot of things that have been going on at the end last year to begin this year and actually for the past couple of years now actually a few years you know you know you don't really know how transient and how precious life is until you realize until they are gone and, and that's because we're so busy worrying about the aesthetic aspect of life and not the true essence of it which is the, is the appreciation of both life and death the way you appreciate death is to know that you only have a certain amount of time to be on this planet not that you don't have time but you have time on this planet and what you do before you die that will give you a peace of mind when you pass away not how much of a good person or how flashy and stylish you were but how much you have done to benefit both yourself and your community around you if you know you truly be a good person then you can die with a, a huge smile on your face and know that you lived your life to the best end of, to, of your ability and to the fullest Uh huh. Now the ones who lie to themselves to make themselves feel better, please don't be rusty to yourself. To see, we can rise above, we can evolve above and past, so we can get past that low life mentality that we like sporting twenty four seven. And you know who I'm talking to, my dreamers. You know who I'm talking to. Not pointing anyone out, but if you get mad at what I just said. It's you. Evolve, honey. You can. You can do it. You can evolve. You can be something even better than this. This is not the end of the road. This is not all you can be. Don't listen to what the man tells you. And I'm not just talking about uh, that, that whole stereotype of when people say the man is talking about the white man. I'm talking about men, people. Because trust me, they have people in your race as well that will try to take you down. Evolve beyond and be something even better than what they say you can be. And honey, if no one tells you, I told you. You can. You are somebody. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and don't agree with me to just agree with me. Do it. And you feel a whole lot better about yourself. You see, when you act rusty like that, you're not happy. You're not happy. So you take your anger out on everybody around you, including yourself. Real talk. Also now, dears, I'm going to promote a channel on here. I have the privilege and the pleasure of meeting a wonderful soul on, on, on YouTube. Please look into my featured channels, module, and check out... um. Drag off Belmont. Some of the most just pleasant, pleasant videos, and just a ple just a pleasantry in all. In all, this is a very nice person. I would get to know this person. Talk to her. that person needs some more people on the channel. You know what I'm saying? For real, honey. Look at some of this, per this person's um content and get to know the person. You know what I'm saying? I've been getting some videos, and I'm going to tell you, uh, Drago, I will be checking out your channel more. More, I could not do it yesterday because I was at work. Well, I met some very interesting people. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hit me up. I would like to talk to you. I would like to talk to you. Love you, honey. All right. Now, what we're going to do is jump off into Chapter 4, which is going to be another multi-feature. Um, and it's entitled The Crowned Princess. It is playing up and, and falling off after the end of chapter three, where we met that little girl. 
Um, now, I'm going to warn you, there's going to be some psychological thriller type aspects coming into the story, which is, is a little personal touch of mine. Um, I love psychology, human psychology, and, you know, the whole mind fuckery <laughs> of, of, of things. So, yeah, you'll see a little bit of my personal touch in this portion of the story. Um, and also, um, if you want to follow along, or if you, it, it, there is a link to my fiction press document that's going to be in this, this little sec, this little, this little mini series, um, of chapter four. So, fuck, please, it'll, it'll be updated, so if you see some things that are kind of like, uh, you know, know that I'm still updating it with each, um, video that I post. So, if you want to wait till the end to view it or anything like that, you know, please do, you know, um, because it's, it's always an evolving process here with us at Team Mix the Storm. So just know that we're trying our best to give you the best quality entertainment and um, relation that we possibly can. And we're also going to try putting some video within these videos. Um, something to give you something more of a little visual aspect to kind of calm you down, simmer you down, simmer you down in these videos. All right. <laughs> I told y'all I'm a character. <laughs> All right, but for real, we're gonna try to that, do that and see if we can we can try to spice up the videos just a little bit because we don't want to be all black all the time. You know, it's make it too gloomy. Um, so we'll we'll try to spice up just a little bit. Or if if you like the 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 regular black, pitch black videos, you know, just let us know in the con comments as well. Um, all right, whew. Ooh, my energy levels, honey, it's up. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to pause this video for 10 seconds um, on our end over here. But if you need to pause it for a little bit longer, just do so. Um, get settled down. Get relaxed. Get situated. Grab yourself a sippy sippy, a munchy munchy, a smoky smoky, or whatever you do. And please get back to us here, team. Storm. Storm, we are here for you. You know, we're here to entertain you and to just, you know, network and get to know you. You know what I'm saying? And, and to share our work and... If you have anything you'd like to share with us or you would like for us to promote on our channel, you know, let us know. We'll be more than happy to patronize you, um, be a patron to your channel and to patrons to your channel and just and let the world know more about you. Because um, he, here, we all believe that you're awesome people. We all believe that you're awesome people. And a big, and a big thank you to the comments and subscribers. We now have 13 subscribers and apparently... Hopefully it will start to keep growing because we want we we would love to have a big community here, um, on this on this channel. And I'm thinking about changing this from DR Miss the channel to DR Mystique to Team Mystic Storm, just so just to let you know. So we'll see. All right, all right, <clears throat> all right. Here we go. Pause it. All right, we're back. <laughs> it took out an extra few seconds, I believe. But, um, all right, here we go. We're going to jump right off into this. Now, just relax. Open your mind. Be free. Be free, all right? All right. Chapter 4. The Crowned Princess. Fate has a cruel yet fantastic way of involving one in another story. Its time is temporary but true, capable of changing a course in a matter of seconds. For the skipping child who saw the limousine crossing realities, fate follows her everywhere, watching her with every fleeting second and that is because she, though young and light of heart, possesses something special, eyes that can see what others cannot. These special eyes grant her perception and outlook not afforded to most children, thus branding her as weird amongst her peers. That is because they are children, innocent creatures that see things for what they are and learn from them. 
If these things aren't understood or prick at a child's exceptions, like most humans, they will dismiss them or be provoked to tears. But not this child. Her name is Day Niece. A little girl whose smile shines like the sun. Denise is the daughter of this state's governess, a darling humanitarian named Nicolette Grenier. As the offspring of a lady of politics, Denise is bred to take her studies seriously, which she does with little fuss. Considered much too mature for her age, <laughs> Denise stands out amongst her peers and some adults. A child with the mindset of one whose spirit surely traveled this world in another life. She speaks, acts, and thinks unlike most children her age, all due to proper upbringing and an insatiable hunger for knowledge. This is as great a strength as it is a weakness. For the hunger for knowledge can lead one along dangerous roads. The Greniers are a sensible family of two, surrounded by a community of low to mid-income laborers, high-income salarymen, and wealthy upperclassmen. A people divided by class and economic status, a place much like the remote Fiorentina. Here, on the rustling, bustling streets of Warwind City, Celestia Ionis, not all is as pleasant as it seems. Criminal activity is just as prominent here as it is in Uvalia. So, the streets aren't safe even for a little child. Despite these truths, Denise finds it no problem to roam about without a care in the world. Such bravery. But most would consider this as poor parenting. That is. Unless one knew the truth about Denise. <laughs> you see, as aforementioned, this child is quite unlike most, one who possesses perception that deems her a special child. This perception has the potential to help her out of and through any given situation. Until this day, Denise will remain innocent. But fate is cruel, unbiased even to a child. Well, Aren't you the cutest little lamb skipping down the street today? She hears a voice she's never heard before, speaking to her from practically nowhere. Denise halts in her tracks to observe her surroundings. <laughs> Only to see everyday traffic and pedestrian life. Don't look around so much, little lamb. People will get suspicious. The voice follows up, an image becoming real to the obliging Denise. It should be impossible, but... Like a ghost from beyond, she sees a girl much like herself, donning a dress, shoes, and bonnet blacker than a moonless night. A ribbon holds her raven locks that ride an unseen wind like rivers of, of obscurity. An entrancing beauty that's just as frightening as she is inviting. Smile. <laughs> you look so much better when you do. Who are you? Me? Silly little lamb, I'm you. Your other side. Little lamb? Mama calls me that. I know, sweetie. <laughs> Saying it makes me happy, doesn't it? Well, if you're me, then I guess... Yeah, I suppose it does. It's strange. 
this mysterious girl claims to be another side of Denise. In a sense to her, it's unbelievable to possess a side that's cold and alluring. A manner of seduction unfitting a woman so innocent. That is so... It's no secret that even a child can possess a man of darkness likened to a scorned and traumatized adult. After all, recorded history has revealed several children who are capable of such evils. And that's learned, people. It's not something that happens, it's learned and it's pushed onto them children. Rusty. Mm -hmm. So, um... Do you have a name? Denise wonders, making her other self smile. Oh no, I'm just asking. I'm another part of you. A personality constrained by your light. Therefore, I don't have a name. Why not give me one? To have a name, it would make me smile. So charming. Her very presence is like a curse of vague origins. This nameless girl, another part of Denise, whose presence freezes her where she stands. A personality that wishes to be named. <sighs> I was always so bright and intelligent. Not even grown-ups could handle me. The other side says, bearing arrogance befitting of a demon of vanity. Abiding narcissism that disconcerts Danies for she's never thought such cruel things about anyone. But that was all they taught me. They thought of me. Unfortunately, humans, they parade arrogantly, preaching superiority to obscure their insecurities. All is done in vain, since such individuals are naked. I don't understand why you're telling me all this. I... I'm nothing like that. Are you? You would lie to yourself to sustain your pride? I expected a better response from myself. But even I am susceptible to ignorance. You... She wants to slap her, punch her, bring harm to her. To hear someone, even if it's another side of herself, insult her so mercilessly. Still, if this truly is another side of Denise, does she really think this about herself? Do her feelings towards everyone really delve so low? She turns away on wound to face her other self, her other self, even if it means denying her very existence. You're absolutely nothing to me. Because I'm not like this. Denise fends her pride with a strong back, folding her arms as if caging her heart. Besides, even if I harbored so, so much hatred towards people, I would find a way to remedy those feelings. So you're nothing to me. Nothing. Is that the name you're giving me? No. It's nothing at all. The other self faces Denise and glances at the wall of her strong back, realizing that she's of little to no importance to her. Despite her efforts, Denise is showing arrogance that's nothing short of insanity. Then again, if what the other self says it's true, she's speaking her innermost feelings. So in a way, Denise is already well on her way to becoming insane. Seferia, the other self states a name, which breaks the wall of Denise's back, turning the denying girl to her other self. You said I was nothing and, according to the many words I've learned, the term cipher has several definitions, one of them being someone or something of no importance. 
So I decided to tweak the word a bit and give it a feminine touch. Seferia, my name. Even if you think yourself as absolutely nothing, what do you think? Is this name suitable for a nothing like me? Or did I, uh, did I put in too much effort? Seferia, that name does sound unique, but the meaning behind it is utterly heartbreaking. It's so paining that Denise feels a dip of sadness in her spirit. She cups her hands at her chest, changing the cage she created into what seems like a stone protecting her heart. And that's all it took. Her other self, Zephyria, has seen through her spiritual defenses. I, I would never give anyone a name like that. It's too much, Danny says making her other self smile. For what reason? Well, it should be quite apparent by now. This side of Denise, as I've said, is a personality constrained by Denise's light. A piece of her that she would never show others. And that's why Seferia knows so much. Why Denise can't deny her. I will say this, I've been hurt before by others, especially those who can't understand me. Why I am just me, just a girl who wants to be so much more, an extraordinary me. Extraordinary? Huh. You're more arrogant than you let on, not arrogant. Selfish, as is any girl my age. Girls are just stupid sometimes. We only think about ourselves and no one else, but that doesn't mean we shut our hearts out from the rest of the world. What I said about being an extraordinary me is about what I wish to become, not what I am. Seriously, what kind of person do you take yourself for? Claiming such p things and having never worked for them? <laughs> it makes me wonder if you're really me. Perception. Something Denise calls her special gift. As said before, her perceptiveness has the potential to help her out of and through anything. That doesn't exclude a battle against herself, mentally, physically, or spiritually. I can't allow my insecurities to dictate what kind of person I am or will become. Denise upholds a strength of a sense of strength in her ideals, surfacing with every word. She doesn't even realize how strong she is right now. But on the other hand, this is also denying her inner self. The things she's saying are pure and righteous. However. They contradict her, stating that she's selfish on the inside. All Seferia can do is smile. What? Did I say something funny? <laughs> you should already know that for yourself. But it looks like you're not as perceptive as you claim to be. Tisk, tisk, little lamb, with those icy words. Seferia disappears, and Denise is left all alone. What Seferia said, it deeply wounded Denise, but not enough to blind her with guilt. To be bind her with guilt. She has no choice but to admit that she's not always perceptive because, above all, she's human, and humans are susceptible to their imperfections. We humans are not perfect beings. There are so many errors that make us just that, empowered or not. And that's why, while it does hurt to hear Seferia's words, Denise 
can easily find the strength to press on. What she, I mean, I said had a lot of meaning, but I won't let that defeat me, she reflects, toughening her spirit in, spirit in the face of reality. Denise looks forward, gazing down the sidewalk ahead to see the crossed street signs and indicating where she's currently standing. Fedora and Lancaster. Hmm. That means I'm a block away from the police station and about a mile away from Mama's workplace. Hmm. I think I'll stop by and pay her a visit. Maybe, um, after all, I have uh, nothing else to do. And I'm pretty sure she's she gets lonely being cooped up in her office all day. <sighs> and that's the end for this portion of the chapter. Um, I'm going to call it a stop right there. Um, let me know what you think about um, Denise and her other self, Seferia. That was a pretty big psychological ride through he the human humanity and the way we carry ourselves. So just let me know. You know, it was a lot of real talk. Not a lot of people, I'm going to be honest with you, everybody can relate to it, even, even if they say they can't. You know, everyone has their hang-ups about them, their self or insecurities or, or inferiorities inside them. Even if they say, I've overcome that and I've become something special. No, the fuck you have not. Because you remember it too well. <laughs> uh, just like this little girl she she's had a, a, a part of her life at a very early age after immersing herself into so much knowledge where she can get a grasp and get a grip on herself so well that she truly can't defeat herself but she can humble herself so that's a very perceptive and very mature little girl that we just met and her other self honey just freaking awesome you know, when I, I, I create this character, should I say these character, these personalities, um, I was, I, I was, I was actually, um, getting ready to go into work and I had my computer with me and I was like, you know, I want to, I want to type and get some stuff out. And this was about a month ago. Um, and I was like, oh my God, no, a month and a half ago. I was like, oh my God, that would be so cool if we, we, we put that in the story. And I, um introduced that to my uh team mystic storm and it was like i love it you know that character is like so awesome and just like these characters are like you know it was like good so the has the whole psychological thriller aspect of the story is really going to play on your it play with play with your mind and, and get you thinking on some things because i'm be honest with you one of the things we're trying to get with this is is, is to gauge your mind and to, and to help help you reflect on some things and 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 it helped you re realize that, honey, you, you ain't there by yourself. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you're not there by yourself. No one is. I've been there. We've all been there. And so have you. Even if you, even if you say, I'm never said that. Uh-huh. Just like all oh, you want to. You've still been there. You don't have to say you've been there, but we've all been there. Before and after puberty. <laughs> uh-huh. Anyway, dears, we're gonna say we're gonna stop it right here. RCS. Um, once again, a big shout out to all my 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 our dreamers here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue on with this um, for the rest of the evening because I'm I'm actually going to be spending some time with somebody. But um, if I you don't hear from me again this evening, I will tell you this that I will be back later um, tomorrow. Um, probably early in the morning. I'm going to record another video just in case, and I'll pu publish it later. Um, but yeah, have a wonderful, blessed evening. And remember, be free, be open-minded, and love each other. Blessings, and thank you so much. I love all of you.